Gas or diesel aren't your only choices these days when it comes to buying a new car. Various automakers have given all sorts of electrification strategies the green light. We have hybrids, we have full battery electrics, we have plug-in hybrids, and we even have some hydrogen vehicles. So there's a wide range of choices out there. Let's take a walk through them and learn more about all of them. Let's start with the one you're likely most familiar. That would be the standard hybrid. There are no plugs here, just a standard fuel tank that you're used to. That's because the main power generator is a gas engine. It works together with an electric motor to create propulsion. If there's enough juice in the typically small battery pack, the car can run on electric only power, but often you'll find the gas engine firing up to do the heavy lifting. The easiest examples of a hybrid is a Toyota Prius. But there are also now hybrid minivans and even a hybrid pickup truck in the 2021 F-150, though Chevy got there first years back with a hybrid version of the Silverado. Now let's look at the plug-in hybrid. This is a similar concept to the standard hybrid, but now the battery pack is larger and it can store more energy. So the vehicle now gets a charging port. You'll typically find much greater electric only driving range on a plug-in hybrid. Just remember to plug it in overnight. But if you don't, you'll be fine in the morning since you still have a tank of fuel for the gas engine. Lots of automakers now offer plug-in versions of their hybrids as they qualify for tax incentives, potential carpool lane usage, and help drastically lower an automaker's overall fuel economy average. A good example of the plug-in hybrid concept can be found on the T8 trims of Volvo vehicles. Now we move into the fully electric space. No more gas engines. We're dealing with battery packs and electric motors. We're talking in terms of kilowatt hours and kilowatts. The easiest way to think of these two terms, and I'm stressing that this is a very simplified version here, that kilowatts is like talking about horsepower, and kilowatt hours is essentially like talking about the size of the tank. You're also referring to charging speed capability in terms of kilowatts. The fastest cars right now can charge between 270 and 350 kilowatts. A more clear view on charging speed though is when you look at it from a miles gained per minute of charging. The more miles you gain per minute, the more quickly your car is taking on juice. And a fully electric car needs that energy as that's all it runs on. The size of the battery is the one measured in kilowatt hours, and the motors are listed in terms of their peak output addressed in kilowatts. When you picture an electric vehicle, you mostly think of a Tesla first. But there's a growing list of other options out there, including vehicles from Hyundai, Nissan, Ford, and even Porsche. Finally, if you're hopefully still with me here, let's touch on hydrogen vehicles. Now, if you don't live in Southern California, you're probably not gonna see one of these. But if you're curious, it's essentially an electric car that uses tanks of stored hydrogen. The hydrogen enters a fuel cell, which is another term for these cars, fuel cell vehicles, and then the hydrogen mixes with oxygen, and that chemical reaction creates electricity. In turn, that electricity is used to power the motors. The only emissions are a bit of water, which is a side result of the hydrogen and oxygen reaction. The benefit for a fuel cell vehicle is that it fills up in a manner similar to a traditional gas station with a pump and nozzle. The big difference though is the higher cost of hydrogen and the crazy 10,000 PSI filling pressure. Right now the infrastructure is extremely limited for fuel cell vehicles, but if you live near a station, the automakers offering them are also offering major fuel credits when you buy one. Think of vehicles like the Toyota Mirai, Honda Clarity, and Hyundai Nexo. So the options for electrification are growing every day. More and more automakers are jumping on the train, and now you have a little bit more information out there to help you navigate the electrified waters. Well, no, you don't wanna go in electrified waters, but you know what I'm saying.